The name of today's title is Ye Shall Surely Die. Ye Shall Surely Die. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep score. We're going to keep count between what God has to say and what Satan has to say. What God's ministers have to say, what Satan's ministers have to say, and wisdom is justified by her children. In other words, look at the end result, and we're going to find out who's who, whose words really stand and whose words fall flat. So we're going to pick this up at John chapter 8, because if you're going to investigate something as this, you have to go to the beginning. Well, Jared, if you're saying you're going to go to the beginning, then why are you going to John chapter 8? That's a reasonable question to ask. Because we're going to go take a look at the first players in the game. And Jesus is going to tell you about one of those players. John chapter 8, verse 41. Brother Rashad, when you get there, go ahead and read. Ye do the deeds of your father. Tell them about the Pharisees. You doing the deeds of your father. Go ahead. Then they said to him. Right. We be not born of fornication. Right. We have one father. Right. Even God. Because they don't understand. Because they're think, talking physical, but he's talking spiritual. You have a different spiritual father. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them. Right. If God were your father. Right. Ye would love me. Right. For I proceeded forth and came from God. That's right. Because Jesus was God before he proceeded forth and came from God. Go ahead. Neither came I of myself. I didn't choose to come on myself. Go ahead. But he sent me. But I was sent. Go ahead. Why do ye not understand my speech? Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. As Jesus or as God speaks, you're going to realize that people don't understand what he's saying. He said, why is that you don't understand my speech? Go ahead. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Because you can't spiritually, with your spiritual ear, hear my words. Go ahead. Ye are of your father, the devil. Uh-huh. And the lust of your father ye will do. Uh-huh. So whatever your father does, those lusts that he has, being that you are his spiritual children, those are the same lusts that you will have. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a what? A murderer. He was a killer from the beginning. But we're going to see how he killed. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. Because he didn't abode or he didn't stay in the truth. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Because there is no truth in him. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie. Right. He speaketh of his own. Now, when he's speaking a lie, he's speaking his own opinions, his own thought process. He's not speaking for God. That's why he is no longer the light bearer. Go ahead. For he is a liar. Uh huh. And the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. In other words, he is the father of all lies. So we need to now investigate one of the original lies put on the table and see if mankind, present day in this year, still holds on to his lie. Back in the Garden of Eden. You want 45? Give me 45. And because I tell you the truth, right. ye believe me not. Now, even though Jesus told you the correct truth, and we're going to see he still told it back here, people still don't believe him to this day. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to take a good look at this. We're going to take a look at the two vantage points, the two points of views, and we're going to see whose words hold weight and whose doesn't. We're going to see who's going to stay around and who's not. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So God formed man out of the what? The dust of the ground. So we all have been made from what? Dust. Keep going. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. So what went into man's nostrils? The breath of life. He breathed into him through his nostrils the breath of life. Go ahead. And man became a living soul. And that very moment... Man didn't have a soul inserted into him. He became a living soul when, with two ingredients, breath of God and dirt. Nothing else was inserted into this man. That's the end of seven? That was seven. Keep yeah. going. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Right. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Right. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. So all these trees that we can still see today, pleasant to the sight, are still here. But go ahead. And good for food. Uh-huh. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Then now the tree of life also. It didn't say that the tree of life came from the ground because the tree of life represents Christ. Go ahead. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And this other tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Because you have to have... Adam, then Eve's going to come shortly thereafter, and then you're going to have Satan and Jesus when he was in the Old Testament called Jehovah. Go ahead. 
That was the end of uh Keep going. Nine. Keep going. Ten. Oh, that's in the nine. Give, give me 15. Ten, give nine. me 15. 15. Yeah. And the Lord God took the man. Right. And put him into the Garden of Eden. Right. To dress it and keep it. Now, he took this man and put him that he formed, put him in the Garden of Eden. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, uh -huh. of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Right. So he told him, you can eat of every tree of this garden. Go ahead. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Thou shalt not eat of it. Right. For but it there's only one tree he could not eat from. He could eat from the tree of life. That was available. That was an option. But what did he choose? We're going to see. He said, you cannot eat a tree of knowledge of good and evil, which represents Satan. Go ahead. For in the day that thou eatest thereof. For five weeks later. The day that thou eatest. Ten months later. The day. Oh, in the day you eat of this tree. Go ahead. That thou eatest thereof. Right. Thou shalt surely die. You shall surely die. That's what God said. God said you shall surely die if you eat from this. We're going to see who else contradicts that, and we're going to see the evidence and see who's really right. Now go ahead and jump to verse 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Right. And he slept. Uh-huh. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh-huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, right. made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Right. So this woman was made of his same flesh. He, she, she's made of the same thing that Adam is made from, and Adam is made of dirt, right? Mm -hmm. So that means Eve is still also composed of the same elements, still of dirt, and the breath of God. Go ahead and finish out uh, 22. That was 20, yeah, that was that 22. That was the end of 22. All right, let's go ahead and jump now and give me uh, 25. And they both were naked, right? the man and his wife, right? and were not ashamed. So now you have four entities in the garden. God, Satan, Adam, and Eve. And Jesus told you that your father, the devil, speaking to these Pharisees, that he was alive from the beginning. Let's take a look at this. Let's go directly into Genesis chapter 3 now in verse 1. And let's read this book. When you get there, go ahead and read. Now the serpent was more subtle than, the, than any beast of the field. Serpent, that's a nickname. That doesn't mean he's an actual snake. This is not an actual reptile. Just like you say, that person that's over here stealing cars is a low-down, dirty snake. It's a nickname. Go ahead. Which the Lord God had made. He was more subtle than any beast. Go ahead. And he said unto the woman, uh -huh. Yeah, have God said... Ye should not eat of every tree so in the garden. So he hit the woman with a question, and she felt obligated to respond to a question to do what? Get her now to interact and have conversation with him, which was forbidden. She said, Hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Uh, apparently, he actually heard what the Lord said. He's now testing to see if she's going to apply what she heard. Because Adam had to teach her because when that command was given in verse 17, she was not brought out, out of his uh, rib cage yet. Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, uh -huh. we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Right. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God hath said, ye shall not eat of it. Right. Neither shall ye touch it. Right. Lest ye die. Right. So because she was taught by Adam and so she had information to kind of push him away. But she didn't have to engage in this conversation. She should have went and got her covering, and he would have uh, 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 really uh, stood in the gap for this situation. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, uh -huh. ye shall not surely die. Now, what did the serpent say? Ye shall not surely ye die. Ye shall not surely die. Contradiction 101, back in the beginning, between the original players, between God, Satan, Adam, and Eve. God said, you shall die. Satan says, you shall not die. Go ahead and give me verse 5. He's going to give some justification on his contradiction. Verse 5. For God doth know right. that in the day ye eat thereof, right. then your eyes shall be opened, uh -huh. and ye shall be as gods, uh -huh. knowing good and evil. He's going to start giving some other justification, but we aren't even here for that. We're here for the original contradiction. Go ahead and keep going. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eyes right. and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Because she felt that this tree or Satan, his conversation could make me wise. 
Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof. Right. And did eat. Right. In other words, she ate of the conversation. Keep going. And gave also unto her husband with her. Right. And he did eat. Right. And that's where we all fell when Adam, with knowledge, took of this same fruit or this same conversation. Hosea chapter 10, verse 13 calls it the fruit of lies and ate that same false doctrine. And now they are thinking that there is no punishment from it. That's the end of uh, that six. Was six. Mm-hmm. Keep going. And the eyes of them both were opened, uh-huh. and they knew that they were naked. Uh-huh. And they sewed fig leaves together right. and made themselves aprons. Right, because apparently it wasn't time for the Lord to let them know that you're naked. There are certain things that the Lord exposed you to at certain times, but now this exposure has corrupted them. Keep going. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden right. in the cool of the day. Right. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from right. the presence of the Lord God. Now they hiding from God. Go ahead. Among the trees of uh-huh. the garden. Uh huh. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Right. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Right. And I was afraid. Uh huh. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Right. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? He didn't say what you've been snacking on. He said, Who told you you were naked? Go ahead. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Right. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. That's where fear started coming in. He started blaming the woman for when he took the conversation with Naz and continued to operate in it. So he's going to now blame the woman, the woman that you gave me. In other words, he's really blaming God. God, if you didn't give me this woman, I wouldn't have had this problem. That's what he's really doing. He's really blaming God. If you have understanding to see. But now let's go ahead and jump to verse uh, 16. 16. 16. Okay. When you get there, go ahead and read. Because the Lord starts passing down punishments. He starts off with Satan, but we're not focused on him. We're focused on man. He's going to start with the woman first because she is part of man. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow right. and thy conception. Right. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Right. And the desire shall be of thy husband. Right. And he shall rule over thee. That's a punishment that didn't have to be if this mistake didn't happen. Give me verse 17. And unto Adam he said. And unto Adam because he saves the last punishment for Adam, the one who had the knowledge of God to go against this lie. Go ahead. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife uh-huh. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying... So thou- that's the problem. The problem is you are eating of the fruit or eating of the conversation that Satan has brought. There's nothing wrong with getting good advice from your wife. That's not what he's saying here. You don't listen to your wife. No, because the conversation that she brought was from Satan and you listened to the conversation that she had with you. That's where you went wrong. Go ahead. Thou shalt not eat of it. Uh huh. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Right. In sorrow shalt thou not, shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. All the days of your life. And that's why we have jobs today. You were on a permanent vacation before this. No death before this. You didn't have to deal with traffic. You didn't have to wake up at 5, 6, 7 in the morning and try to get in bed by 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Because you have to hit the, uh, your alarm clock. You were on a permanent vacation before this. Go ahead now and jump down to verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Right, so sweat of your face, labor. Go ahead. Till thou return unto the ground. Until you what? Return unto the ground. Until you return unto the ground. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken. For out of the ground I took you. Go ahead. For dust thou art. For dust thou art. And unto dust shall thou return. And you shall return where? To the dust. That's what God said. That's his punishment on man. But we're going to see if they believe the Lord today. Now let's go to, uh, 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 turn to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, and can I get that uh, grave picture? And in the meantime, I'm going to read to y'all. This is a little morbid. Heads up. These are what's called the stages of death. They call it the stages of death, but really is the stages that happen after death. The first one is called pallor mortis, which means paleness. So if you have a lighter complexion, this happens to you within the first 15 to 25 minutes. Then the second stage is algor mortis, mortis, which means, mortis means uh, death. Algor means coldness. So someone that has died will begin to feel cold shortly thereafter. Rigor mortis 
is stiffness. You know, like rigor means rigid. So rigor mortis peaks at about 12 hours and dissipates after about 48 hours. Someone that has died is stiff. Then the next stage is liver mortis, which means a bluish color or a bruise. Liver mortis starts within 10, 20 to 30 minutes and continues to about 12 hours later. After those four, three stages, three, four stages come about, then you have what's called putrefaction, which is the breakdown of the cohesiveness between the tissues and it begins to have the liquefaction of your organs. Your organs begin to liquefy. Then you have decomposition, which is the process by which dead organic matter and substances are broken down into simpler organic matter, or de decomposition overall, and then skeletization, which is the process by where all self tissue is eliminated, leaving only disarticulated bones. So that's all that's left. Bones, and then there's fossilization because those bones are around for a long time. So if under the right conditions, a fossil or a, a, a skeleton will turn into a fossil or just break down completely. But these are the eight stages that happen after death. Because then the Lord said, you're going to return to the dust, for the dust thou are taken unto the dust thou shalt return. These are the actual scientifically proven stages that happen after death. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 and see why did I set the stage like this? Hebrews chapter 4, we're going to hit one verse, verse 12. Why did I set the stage like this? Talking about death, talking about these two conversations in the garden, talking about the stages of, that happen after death because Hebrews chapter 4 is telling us a clue. Give us first verse 12. Hebrews 12, uh, 4 and verse 12, when you get there, go ahead and read. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick or sharp. Go ahead. And powerful. And powerful or living. And In other words, it, it, it's quick meaning living and sharp. Go ahead. And sharper than a, any two-edged sword. No matter what two-edged sword you have, it's not as sharp as this. And I'm going to show you why. Go ahead. Piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It's going to divide between the soul and the spirit. The soul means the body or when you're carnal or operating in your flesh. But the world says, hold on, Jared. No, no, no. A soul is something that's inside of you. But the book says this is going to divide between soul and what? Spirit. And spirit. There's going to be a, di a, a, a difference between these two. I'm going to show you why the stage is being set. Finish that out. And of the joints and marrow. And of the joints and the marrow. Go ahead. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, so the joints and the marrow is what he's talking about with that soul. That's body, right? Mm -hmm. And then the thoughts and the intent of the heart, meaning the mind. Oh, that's spirit. Now the stage has been set, and the Word of God can, uh, 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 with the quickness, separate between these. That's the end of verse 12? That was 12, yeah. Perfect. Now let's go to Leviticus chapter 5. Give me Leviticus chapter 5. Because what people don't realize is that there is a lot of conversation in regards to death where they are really implying that you have the same structure almost like a snake. Well, what do you mean, Jerry? That's not sister such and such or brother such and such. That's just her snake skins behind. She's off somewhere else. Oh, that's serpent conversation. You done left behind some skins. We're going to see if that's the case. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. Because that's another way of saying they're not really dead. That's just the that's just their remains of their metamorphosis. Go ahead, Leviticus chapter 5, and give me verse. One, Leviticus 5, verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. And if a soul sin. If a soul sin, so a soul can sin, all right? Go ahead. And hear the voice of swearing. Hold up, and hear, so a soul can hear? In order to hear, what does that mean you have to have? Ears. So a soul has ears. Go ahead. And is a witness. And is a witness, go ahead. Whether he have seen or known of it. Whether he have seen, oh, you can see it. That requires sight, which means Eyeballs, go ahead. If he do not utter it, right, then he shall bear his iniquity. If he doesn't utter it, well, how do you utter? By speaking mm -hmm. the utterance of your mouth. So we done found different parts of the body already. Go ahead. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing. Oh, if a soul does what? Touch. Touch. That's your hands. That's anything you can touch with. Go ahead. Whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast uh -huh. or a carcass of unclean cattle. Right. Or a carcass of unclean creeping things. Right. And if it be hidden from him, 
he also shall be unclean and guilty. Right. Give me verse four now. Or if a soul swear. Or if a soul swear. That's your tongue. That's your conversation. That's the same as that utterance. Go ahead. Pronouncing with his lips to do evil. With your lips. So a soul has lips, has a mouth to make utterance, has ears to hear and eyes to see. What is a soul according to the body, I guess? Because I'm not hearing it from the rest of the world's conversation. They don't know what a soul is. Go ahead. Or to do good. Right. Whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath. Right. Or it be hid from him. Right. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. Right. In other words, we're just focused on the body part, not necessarily the whole conversation in this instance. But then, Brother Jarethan, well, now you have to go back and help correct something that I'm confused on. Because you say in the day that he ate of that tree, they surely going to die. Mm -hmm. Turn to Genesis chapter 5 and give me verse 5. And he, he said, in that day you're going to die when you eat of that tree that I command thee that you should not eat of. Genesis 5 and verse 5. When I broke this out, because a few years ago I did a funeral down in D.C. for a brother. I broke this verse out. The ministers up front were perplexed. Those who didn't really deal with the church was like, what is this? I never saw this connection here. And some people that didn't want to hear the book anyways, it was already leaving. Used to this. Genesis 5 and verse 5, when you get there, go ahead and read. And all the days that Adam lived. And all the days that Adam lived were what? Were 930 years. 930 years. But we saw even before Cain and Abel were on the scene that they broke the commandment of God and ate the tree that they were not supposed to eat from. So how is he living 930 years after? The Bible tells you. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Because when they hear the Lord's conversation in Genesis, they don't know the spiritual side of it. They think they're reading like a regular novel and the spiritual understanding is going right over their head. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, when you get there, go ahead and read. But beloved, uh -huh. be not ignorant of this one thing, right? that one day is with the Lord right? as a thousand years. One day with the Lord is as a what? A thousand years. So you're going to die within that day. Adam, you will not be allowed to live beyond 1,000 years. You're going to die at 930 because I told you that day you eat thereof, you're going to die. That's the end of eight? No, that's the... Uh, Finish no. it out. And a thousand years is one day. And a thousand years to God is one day. God is carrying the conversation back in Genesis chapter uh, 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 2, verse 15 through 17. So now we have to understand what he means. Oh, I'm not going to live forever. Death is still going to come, but there were some other things that happened within his life. Let's go now to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, because some will try to say, well, see, when they ate of that tree, they died spiritually. Mm -hmm. That's why I made sure to walk down the decomposition of a body so you know what he meant when he said you're going to return to the dust. Because God don't lie. It's men that mess this up and tell other men and train other preachers to teach this falsehood. And they don't go back to the book, the original teacher, the original comforter, the original counselor and get this story straight. But every once in a while, the Lord will stir up the spirit of someone to tell the people how to go. Let's go now to Ecclesiastes 9 and give me verse 5. Ecclesiastes, we're back to hear Solomon, the wisest man other than Christ, and what he has to say. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5. When you get there, go ahead and read. For the living know that they shall die. The, we all do know that. We all know we shall die. Ever since what Adam and Eve did, mainly Adam, because Adam was the one that had the position to push against or rebuke the conversation of Satan. But he didn't. Go ahead. But the dead know not anything. The dead, those that have died, don't know nothing. They know not anything. Go ahead. Neither have they any more a reward. Right. For the memory of them is forgotten. The memory of them is forgotten. So if you have a parent that died, their memory of you is forgotten according to the Bible. 
until they're resurrected. Go ahead. Also their love. Their, the lo right, because they have loved ones, right? Their love, go ahead. And their hatred. And the people that they couldn't stand. Go ahead. And their envy. And the things that they really wish that they could get their hands on. Go ahead. Is now perished. It's perished. Spirit sometimes speaks of the thoughts of the mind. There is no thoughts of the mind of the dead. Go ahead. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Why is this? So, so why should we get our act together? Verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. So whatever you going to do, go ahead. Do it with thy might. Do it with all your might, all your exuberance, all your zeal. Go ahead. For there is no work. There's no work. Nor device. Nor device. Nor knowledge. Nor knowledge. Nor wisdom. Nor wisdom. In the grave. In the what? In the grave. In the grave. Go ahead. Whither thou goest. So you cannot communicate with your ancestors if they have no wisdom, nor device, nor knowledge in the grave where you going, because all the living know that they shall die. Amen. That's the end of verse 10? That was 10. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3. Let's back up now. <clears throat> because I, was, I want to set the stage for where you see the body go and what is missing from the equation. Consciousness of those that have died. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes 3. And give me verse 18. See, a lot of, a lot of times... You prepare to do a eulogy and do the Lord's eulogy, be prepared to get some looks and even some threats. Because when you bring this out and they had a whole vision that was comforting them and the book is going against that vision, be prepared to, as the messenger, they're going to want to deal with you. But the Lord said, I've made your forehead hard against their foreheads. Don't worry about that. Ecclesiastes 3, and give me 18. When you get there, go ahead and read. I said in my heart. I said in my heart. Concerning the estate of the sons of men. This is all about the sons of men, meaning son and daughters of men. Go ahead. That God might manifest them. Uh-huh. And that they might see that they themselves are beasts. That they can consider that, man, at the end of the day, I'm just a beast. Go ahead. For that which befalleth the sons of men. Because the same thing that happens to men. Go be ahead. Befalleth beast. It's the same thing that happens to animals or the beasts of the earth. Go ahead. Even one thing befalleth them. What's this one thing? As the one dieth, right. so dieth the other. Right. Yeah. That they all one breath, right. so that a man have no preeminence above a beast. Hold on. We share the same breath, the same air as all the animals on the earth. And we have to consider, man, at this present state, we are just considered beasts at this time. We share the same breath, and we go to the same grave as they do. Go ahead. For all is vanity. For everything is vanity. Go ahead. All go into one place. Where's that? Go ahead. All are of the dust. All <coughs> are of, meaning from the dust. Go ahead. And all turn to the dust again. And all go back to the dust again, both man and beast. Go ahead. Who knoweth the spirit of man? That Whoa, goeth hold up. Who knoweth the spirit of man? What is this? Who know the spirit of man that what? That goeth up. That goes up. So, all right, Brother Jared, I got you there. I got a spirit of man that's going up. Go ahead. And the spirit of the beast that goeth down. Oh, and see, the spirit of the beast goes down. Go ahead. To the earth. Uh-huh. So now they say, well, see, the spirit of the beast goes down to the earth, but the spirit of man goes up. But they don't remember what that spirit was that this is being spoken of because it said they all share what? They all share one breath. Mm -hmm. But let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 12. You mean all this wisdom that Solomon had and he's writing about the simplicity of beasts and man and dust and breath? Yes, because in today's generation, this goes above their heads until they come into the right church of God. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Remember while you young, go ahead. While the evil days come not. Because we have evil days now. Thanks to Adam, we age. We get older. Thanks to what Adam did. When the evil days come, go ahead. Nor the years draw nigh. Or the years Draw nigh. Go ahead. When thou shalt say, right. I have no pleasure in it. And them. they're going to say, I'm not having as much fun as I did in my youth. 
Give me verse three. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, uh huh, and the strong men, and the strong men shall bow down, shall bow, bow themselves. Right. And the so, grind. So, so the strong men are now doing what? Bow. They're leaning over. With, with that cane, they bowing down. Go ahead. And the grinders cease because they are few. And the grinders start ceasing. What are these grinders? These are the teeth of your mouth. You ain't grinding no more because your teeth are starting to fall out because they are few. Go ahead. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. And, the, and your vision, that's the windows that you're looking out of. All of a sudden, your vision starts going down because it's becoming darkened. Go ahead. And the door shall be shut in the streets. Uh -huh. Jump down to verse 5. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is, which is high, uh -huh. and fear shall be in the way. Right. And the almond tree shall flourish. Right. And the grasshopper, grasshopper shall be a burden. Right. And desire shall fail. Right. So all these things are, uh, a grasshopper is a burden. It's just saying the things that are considered light are all of a sudden heavy now. And um, now let's go ahead and give me verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth. As After all this, the dust shall return unto the earth. That's when death has occurred. Go ahead. As it was. As it was. Go ahead. And the spirit shall return unto God. And the what shall return unto God? The spirit. The spirit shall return unto God. We need to take a look at this. Finish that out. Who gave it? Who gave it? Let's take a look at what goes back to God when death occurs. Let's go to Job 27 now and verse Three. Job 27 and verse 3. See, because I plan on putting all this on the table so that the moment that I die, I will have something on my record showing that I went directly against Satan and his original lies. I wasn't complicit with them. Job 27 and verse 3. When you get there, go ahead and read. All the while my breath is in me. Right. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. And the what is in my nostrils? The spirit of God. The spirit of God is in my nostrils. But what did he say is in him? My breath is in me. Mm -hmm. Finish it out. Oh, no, no, that, that, that was, was it. No, no, that, that was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. So what did man, uh, the Lord breathe into to, uh, Adam through his nostrils? The breath of life. And he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. But this whole time we're seeing that the spirit that goes back to God is nothing more than the breath that was being breathed. Isaiah chapter 2. That's why they always say, such and such before they passed took their last breath. Because mm -hmm. that is spirit. Can I go ahead and get the uh, iPad? That is what it is. All right, it's connected. Just let me know when you're ready. Uh, Isaiah tw uh, 2 and 22, that one verse, when you get there, go ahead and read. Cease ye from man uh -huh. whose breath is in his nostrils. Whose what is in his nostrils? Breath. His breath is in his nostrils. So all we're seeing consistently is that there is something that leaves and goes back to God, but it's not you. It is your breath. So, so far from what I've seen, Especially that seeing that there's no wisdom in the grave, who should I believe? The one that said, you shall surely die or you shall not surely die? I think by all accounts, we can at least score one point for the one that said, you shall surely die. We're going to keep score. We're going to keep score today. Let's keep going. Let's go now to Job 34. Job 34. Keep the screen up. Job 34. And we're going to pick this up at verse 12. Job 34 and verse 12. We're actually still setting the stage. It's a lesson like this, I could really do in three parts and show all kinds of nuances and particulars that once you show the truth, there's going to be areas in when the book where they're going to run to and think that they have coverage. But we're going to run there too, eventually. Job 34 and verse 12, when you get there, go ahead and read. Yeah, surely God will not do wickedly. Right. Neither will, will the Almighty pervert judgment. He's not going to pervert judgment. Jump down to verse 14. If he set his heart upon man. Right. If he gather unto himself his spirit. If God gathers the spirit, 
from this man, go ahead. And his breath. And his breath, go ahead. All flesh shall perish together. All the flesh shall perish together. That breath and that spirit is one and the same. Like saying, hear, O Israel, and hear ye house of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the same thing. Go ahead. And man shall turn again unto dust. And man shall turn again into an angel. He got angel wings. Unto dust. Man, we looking down from heaven. Unto dust. He's in purgatory looking up. Unto dust. I guess my imagination can't get around the book. So that person that died is still dead. Mm -hmm. That's the end of 17 yeah, that or 15? That 15? was 15. Give me Psalms 104. Psalms 104. You keep reading this book and you keep keeping score, you're going to understand who the word is really going to stand. Psalms 104 and verse 1. Because it's interesting that when people tell you, well, that old law is done away with, then why are people still dying? That came back from the law. And if Christ did away with everything, then why are we still having death? And why do we still have to go to work? Amen. I need some extra vacation days myself. <laughs> because everything is happening in phases. Psalms 104 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Right. O Lord, my God. Right. Thou art very great. Right. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Uh-huh. Keep going. Who covers thyself with light. He covers himself with what? Light. With light. Go ahead. As with the garment. Uh-huh. Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. And he's the one that stretched the heavens out like a curtain. Go, because there's going to be a time where that curtain's going to be pulled back. And they're going to see he is. Verse 4. Who maketh his angels spirits. He, what does he make his angels? Spirits. All angels are, they don't have souls because they don't have actual flesh and blood bodies. They are all spirits. Who maketh his angels spirits, go ahead. His ministers of flaming fire. And his ministers of flaming fire. That's why a lot of times you see a fiery tongue or a fiery hand or two pills of fire on their legs. Something revealing parts of that angel. You have saw a whole angel step in the fire Deal with Samson's parents. But they have spiritual bodies. Spiritual bodies don't die. That's why there's the lake of fire to punish them forever because they don't die. And it's a different kind of fire because every time they show up, you see some type of fire attributed with their visage or their appearance. So if that's regular fire ain't nothing for them or the angel that was in the bush that was on fire and it wasn't consumed, then what kind of fire is that lake of fire made out of? Man does not consider. Go now to verse um, 27. 27. These wait all upon thee. Right. That thou mayest give them their meat and do uh -huh. season. That thou givest them, they, they gather, thou openest thine hand. Uh -huh. They are filled the with good. The Lord gives blessing. He opens his hands and you receive a blessing. Go ahead. They are filled with good. Uh huh. Thou hidest thy face. But when the Lord hides his face from you, in other words, turn his back on you because some of you ain't doing right. Go ahead. They are troubled. They are troubled. Go ahead. Thou takest away their breath. The Lord says, that's it. I don't care if you want a ventilation system or not. I'm taking your breath. Go ahead. They die. And they die and they what? And return to their dust. Hold up. Every funeral I go to, they say that they're in heaven looking down smiling. But this book keeps saying they keep returning to the dust. Because when you tell people that they're already in some other location, you are nullifying or removing the ability for the Lord's to, uh, a stage to be set for the resurrection. Amen. No one's being taught the resurrection. And if they hear about a resurrection, it's in a movie where they think it's a zombie or something. Like you're coming up decrepit. Not realizing that the Lord used agriculture to teach man about the resurrection. A small, weak seed goes in the ground, but it comes out a powerful oak tree. He's using vegetation to teach y'all this. Go ahead. Then sendeth forth thy spirit. But when it's time to create man, he does what? He sends forth that spirit. The one that we saw in the nostrils, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. They are created. And they are created. Go ahead. And thou renewest the face of the earth. And thou renewest the face of the whole earth. Yet again, showing that if he has taken away your breath, you have returned to the dust, which is 
point for the Lord. Mm-hmm. This looks pretty easy to me. The more book we're going to keep reading, we're going to just see it's going to be a blowout. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to John 3. Let's go to John 3. Because, in fact, can I also get, um, can I get that heaven picture? Because the same way Satan tried to directly, directly, overtly, in your face, try to oppose the word of God, People will try to do that with his words today. So let's see what Jesus said in the new book. John 3 and 13. John 3 and 13. And see, the more you take away the understanding of what happens with death, the more they would be oblivious of what the prophecies are speaking about in the Old Testament and how to look for those coming to pass. That's why they say it's all done away with, because they think they already got the reward ahead of time. John 3 and 13, give me that one verse when you get there. Go ahead and read. And no man have ascended up to heaven. And no man has ascended up to heaven. Go ahead. But he that came down from heaven. But the one that came down from heaven, which is Christ. Go ahead. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. The Son of Man, Jesus, is the only one that has ascended up to the heaven. And in another lesson, we'll show you that this is talking about the third heaven. There are three heavens according to the Bible. Keep coming, we'll show you that. But this here, when you show people this, they'll try to look for excuses. Well, what about Elijah? Well, what about Enoch? Well, time out, time out. The Lord put his word down. Who is looking to contradict and go against his word other than someone that's been sitting under a snakeskin preacher? Let's go a little bit further. Let's go now to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, because when people have been told and inundated with this one image, with this one lie, which comes directly from Satan, according to Luke 14 chapter, he wants to go to heaven. That's his homecoming. He was sent here as a punishment. He wants to go back to where he was sent from. We were taken from the ground. The Lord wants to move in here. But no, we've been listening to the wrong tree. So we want to go where Satan wants to go because we act like he's not around here walking today. As if he's not spreading lies today. And as if his ministers are preaching lies today. This book will tell you he has ministers and they are on their job. In our own county, the police have to give escort because they have so many people in those churches. Luke 8 and 41, Luke 8 and 41, when you get there, go ahead and read. And behold, uh-huh. there came a man named Jairus. Uh-huh. Jairus, yep. Jairus. Uh-huh. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. Uh-huh. And he fell down at Jesus' feet. Right. And besought him that would come into his house. Uh-huh. Go, go ahead and jump down to uh, 51. Because I, I just want to show Jairus in, uh, in this instance, but he ends up running to a woman with, uh, with the issue of blood. But we're dealing directly with Jairus right now. 51. When you get there, go ahead and read. And when he came into the house, uh-huh. he suffered no man to go in, right. save Peter right. and James and John, uh-huh. and the father and the mother of the maiden, uh-huh. and all wept and, be- and bewailed her. Right. It's a sad time. His daughter has died. People are weeping. They're suffering. Go ahead. But, but he said, uh-huh. weep not. Weep not. Go ahead. She is not dead. She is not dead. But sleepeth. But sleepeth. Hold up. Hold up now. You mean that now I have to really investigate sleep because he's showing that her state right now is not her final state. I have the power to wake her up. Go ahead. And they laughed him to scorn. And they going to laugh. All of a sudden, they're not as sad no more, right? (laughs) They got some comic relief. He said he's going to raise her up. Go ahead. She's not dead. Go ahead. Knowing that she was dead. Uh Uh-huh. And he put them all out. Get out. Go ahead. And took her by the hand and called, saying, uh-huh. Maid, arise. He said, Maid, arise. He didn't say, Come down hither and re inhabit your body. Mm-hmm. He said, Maid, arise. That makes sense why he would say, No man is in heaven. Mm-hmm. If he's been there, he would know if no one's been in that house. And he'll tell you about the one that was in the house that got kicked out, which was named Satan. He said, made, 
Arise. Go ahead. And her spirit came again. Her what? Spirit. <gasps> Walk in the funeral home and hear that sound next to the coffin and see if you don't run out the, the whole funeral home. You paying your respects and you hear, <gasps> that spirit came back. Go ahead. And she arose straightway. And she arose straightway. Go ahead. And he commanded to give her meat. And she arose and she said, Woo! You won't believe what I saw up there. It was this, it was angels, it was colors. She ain't say that? Mm. You mean there was no conversation? You mean nobody that Jesus has ever resurrected ever gave conversation of an afterlife and what they saw and experienced in this book? Who is giving these experiences when the book says the dead know not nothing? I'm pointing out what you don't see where someone has plans of something else there. Mm -hmm. Nah, because she had died. But Jesus calls that sleep. That's the end of 55. Uh, read through the 55 if you haven't got there. Uh, yeah, that was the end of 55. Perfect. Let's go to now Psalms 13. Because if they had read the Psalms, by the time Jesus got there, then when he says she is not dead but sleep, then maybe they wouldn't be so astounded and wouldn't find it as a laughing matter because they read the scriptures. Psalms 13, one verse, verse 3. When you get there, go ahead and read. Consider and hear me, O Lord. Consider and hear me, O Lord. Go ahead. My God. Uh-huh. Lighten mine eyes. Lighten my eyes. Go ahead. Lest I sleep. Lest I sleep. The so, sleep of death. The sleep of death. You mean in the Old Testament, there was already a reference, more than that one, how showing that sleep is also making a reference to the sleep of death. There are sometimes he's talking about the first death, and there are times when he's talking about the second death. There are times that's talking about the first sleep. There are times that's talking about this other sleep, which is the sleep of death. But he just said, made arise, wake up. Now let's go to Acts chapter 7. Because he's showing you, I'm setting the stage for all those people that have died in righteousness to come back. They have not left the earth. They were buried here on earth. And here's where I'm going to wake them up. Acts 7 and 55 when you get there, go ahead and read. This is dealing with Stephen. Stephen was walking down this book, but then, you know, people couldn't handle his conversation. Acts 7 and 55, when you get there, go ahead and read. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the, meaning he was full of the understanding of the word. That's why if you read the whole conversation, Acts 7, he's quoting a whole bunch of Old Testament scriptures. Go ahead. Looked up steadfastly uh -huh. into heaven. He, he's looking up into heaven. Go ahead. And saw the glory of God. Uh-huh. So the Lord's showing him a vision. Go ahead. Did, did it say he, he went off there right away? Go ahead. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Uh-huh. And said, behold, I see the heavens opened. Uh-huh. And the Son of Man standing on the right, right hand of God. So soon as people see this, this is where they say, uh-oh, he's getting ready to take off. Countdown minus five, four, three, two. Go ahead. And they cried out with the clap with a loud voice. They mad at him. Go ahead. And stopped their ears. Uh huh. And ran upon him. Uh huh. With, with one accord. Uh huh. And cast him out of the city. Uh huh. And stoned him. Uh, and they stoned him. Go ahead. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. Right. Whose name was Saul. Whose name was Saul. Keep going. And they stoned Stephen. And they stoned him. Go ahead. Calling upon God and saying, Uh huh. Lord Jesus. Receive my spirit. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And that's where they said, oh, he done took off. Because they never read what the spirit is in this instance according to the book. They forgot the very first elements of man and what goes back to God. They never read Solomon, even though they were descendants of, you know, the tribes of Israel. And, the, and he was king over them. Go ahead. And he kneeled down uh -huh. and cried with a loud voice. Right. Lord. Right. Lay not this sin to their charge. That wouldn't have been me. <laughs> I'll tell you that right <laughs> off. I said, I'm going to see you in the first resurrection, buddies. Go ahead. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And when he said he fell what? Fell asleep. Well, hold up. Falling asleep 
is showing an absence of consciousness. So if Stephen in the New Testament falls asleep, then who is telling me or putting an idol in my head that he just levitated and got off the ground? That's, a, that's what the book calls an idol in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes when he was reprimanding those Pharisees, he asked them in several cases, what is written in the law? How readest thou? In other words, how are you reading this? There's people that can read, but how you read it makes all the difference whether you can see it or not. But we see here that Stephen fell asleep. Which sleep? The sleep of death. Psalms 13. Let's go now to uh, uh, um, 